So we did oh, last, last year. year. Yeah. Yeah. All right, follow the meeting order. Everybody, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I see a flag back there or one up here, so wherever you need to go. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right, next up we have reading of the mission statement and strategic priority number one. Gina, please. The mission, we will empower a community of lifelong learners who strive for personal excellence through meaningful relationships and real world authentic learning experiences. And stri strategic priority number one, increase student opportunities that integrate real-world focus and application-based learning to ensure all students are college, career, and life ready. Thank you. Um, next, conflict of interest declaration. Now is the time to declare if any of the agenda items pose a personal conflict of interest. Does anybody have any to declare? Okay. Approval of agenda. Anything modified or changed? Okay. All right, entertain a motion to approve the agenda as presented. Motion by Emily. Is there a second? Second. Second by Tim. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Next up is greet visitors, communications from the public. Uh, members of the community are invited to make comments about items of interest or concern. We'd like to remind you that this is a board meeting in the public and not a public meeting. By law, members cannot address concerns during this portion of the meeting. We ask that you remember Iowa law prohibits the board from discussing specific employees, their job performance, or individual students. Is there anybody here to speak in public comment? Just a lot of bodies with kids, evidently, for vertical whiteboards. <laughs> I don't like it. I don't like it. All right. Bear with us. Just are we going there now first? Yep, we're going to do a little first? introduction okay. and we'll get you so, there. So, information only strategic plan monitoring report. Yeah, so the reason we're at the middle school is uh, for the board to see the vertical whiteboards. Uh, it comes from our work that Tamara has been working with our <clears throat> math teachers that started in the middle school around building thinking classrooms. Um, I got the opportunity to step in last year. And uh, when we talk about how do we help our kids develop profile of graduate skills at a younger grade level, I think you'll see that at the vertical whiteboard that, they, that they're that they demonstrating those skills and learning math. Um, so kudos to, I want to shout out to Tamara and the, and the middle school math teachers. Um, started out of a personalized PD program. She supported over two years, and now we have this going on across the district. You walk into a high school algebra class, you'll see them. 
all the way down to kindergartners. So uh, really great program. I'm excited and thankful for all the families. Anything to share, Tam, before we move up there? Yeah, we can just oh, sorry. Oh. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. Yeah. I'm Tamara Payne. I am the K-12 math instructional coach for the district. And um, a few years ago, several of my um, professional groups that I'm a part of started mentioning this book by Peter Lilladal called Building Thinking Classrooms. So I started digging in and learning more about it. And then we were really fortunate in Iowa because Peter Lilladal, the author, visited our ICTM conference in the fall of 2022. And I was fortunate enough to be able to go and was overwhelmed by the experience they had us as teachers act as students. And so when I started reading the book, um, it talks a lot about mimicking. And if you think back to your days of being a student in a classroom, it's really the teacher stands at the board, shows you what to do, gives you a problem, you work through it together, and then you get a bunch of practice problems and repeat, right? Well, what we're finding is kids don't retain information when they're just following steps that a teacher tells them to do. So instead, we kind of flip the script. Let's give them a problem, see what they know, see how they can use what they do know to figure out what they don't know. The kids love it. The teachers love it. We're seeing so much engagement. Um, as I said, I'm in all of the buildings. The high school was probably the most overwhelming for me um, to see the high school kids like I went from 50% of the class being engaged to I would even be, I think I could say 98% of the classroom being engaged. Like it, it just, it really brings students into the work. Um, as Justin said, our profile of a graduate, there's a lot of collaborating going on. It's self-driven, self-starting. So I just, I can't wait for you to see the kids. Obviously this is a little bit, um, <laughs> It's not the regular school day. It's not the regular classroom. So um, there might be a little bit of difference there, but I think you'll get the idea of what it looks like. Um, and hopefully you'll go home and talk to more kids about it and see what they think about the thinking classrooms. Yep. So are we ready? We're ready. Let's go up. Um, we're going to go up the stairs. And it's Emily ran to the restroom. Perfect. I didn't even take my phone with me up there. I felt I was like, Okay. I was gonna take pictures. Oh, so thank you. I usually yeah, send them. For, you know, I send them to Kendra whenever <laughs> we're at things like this. <laughs> okay, we have everybody. Perfect. Next up, we're going to do a little switching. We were going to do building level reports, but FFA uh, recap is ready to go. So FFA students, you're up. Thank you. Okay, well, good evening, everyone. Thanks for letting us take a little time out of the agenda. My name is Carly Christensen. I'm currently serving as Winterset FFA president. We're here to share a little bit about National Convention, and with me is Emma Bradley. I'm currently serving as the Winterset FFA Vice President. I have Gary Lawrence. I'm serving as this year's set. Perfect. So we're just going to walk you through some things at the convention that we attended a couple weeks ago. Um, we went to Indianapolis, Indiana. That's where our National FFA Convention is held. We took eight members to Indianapolis for the convention. We left on Tuesday, October 22nd, and then we were there until Saturday the 26th. We covered a total of 1,237 miles to be exact. We joined the sea of blue jackets that takes on Indiana. It's pretty incredible. Anywhere you go downtown Indianapolis, you just see blue jackets flooded down every single suite, every single street and every restaurant that you can possibly see. So that was super fun to join this year. 
we, in order to get there, we had to fundraise, of course. So we weren't just able to attend. We, there's a lot of qualifications and we have to meet a lot of areas of eligibility in order to attend the convention. So we fundraised enough sponsor money, um, about $3,000 to be exact, in order to cover meals, accommodations. We didn't have to carry a lot of money with us to the trip. We fundraised ahead of time so that way the chapter can sponsor it while we're out there. And that's not on us as members. And we can just enjoy the convention. That's a big part about getting there is kids have to fundraise and make sure that they get enough money to attend the convention. Um, on Tuesday, October 22nd, members toured an alpaca farm in West Branch, Iowa, Tanner's Orchard in Spirit, Illinois, and Hummel's Livestock in Cavery, Illinois. Hummel's Livestock was really interesting. They actually started their company with exotic cats. Apparently, they were each 30,000 a cat. Yeah. And, uh, 400 built herd. And they had three exotic Argentine and heifers that they kept. And they're going to sell that for shows. It's really cool. And their entire thing is about being different. It was really awesome. Being someone that likes cattle, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, Palca, alpaca farm. It was really interesting. We, they have a lot of ways to die, which is extremely Very fragile morbid. animals. We learned. Very fragile. Like, as fragile as a baby, like, supposedly. Very weird. And if you take it to the mill and you have a name for it, the fur, you just ask for that animal's name, and it's the same fur, and they'll keep producing it for you. So you want a fur and silk's name, we'll get silk, silk hat, <laughs> silk sweater. It's pretty cool. <laughs> so we're able to break up our travel day with some tours, and that makes it a lot easier to travel that many miles. So when we got there, the theme this year was to engage at national convention. I think last year it was evolve. They always have some sort of a verb that applies to everyone that attends the convention. That's what the keynote speakers they use to address. They say, we want you to engage this year at the national convention. So on Wednesday, October 23rd, we arrived for our first day at the convention. We participated in workshops. We watched contests. We attended general sessions in Lucas Oil Stadium. We heard keynote speakers. One of the big ones, I think his name is Kevin Wurzer. I believe he was just a super energetic guy that made us all super excited for the rest of the convention. And yeah, we also had a major, I think this is, this is the second day, but we had a major keynote of Temple Grandin. So that was super interesting. We learned about her in ag class. So that was super cool to bridge that gap in hearing her talk. Tours continued on Thursday, October 24th. Members broke up convention days with more tours at Ozark Fisheries, Dandy Breeze Creamery, and Heartland Growers Greenhouse. Harlan Groves was really cool. They had a bunch of poinsettias. If you can kind of see, it's a little blurry. But there was tons of poinsettias that people can buy and order. And I uh, think like crates is what they did. That was really interesting. And this this is a bunch of crawfish that I had to sacrifice my hand for. Um, that was fun. And it had snapping turtles, catfish. It was really interesting to see that. Tons of exotic koi, Japanese koi fish, I think. That was really fun. And then the Dandy Breeze Creamery, they blew up in 2020 because of COVID. Um, no one could buy in stores in Indiana, so they had to go to local. So they just exploded with a bunch of customers. And that was really interesting. We got to go around at the dairy cabs if you wanted. Awesome. So for our second day at National Convention, we came back to Lucas Oil on Friday. We return to the convention to continue to partake in workshops, attend sessions, and watch some other contests. We have the opportunity to visit the College Expo and Shopping Center. So normally when we would get to the convention, we kind of have the day to ourselves. We wanted to go and talk to some colleges. We wanted to go watch the contest nationally. Or we would gather in Lucas Oil Stadium and fill over half of the stadium with blue jackets to watch the general sessions. So those days were super nice to take what you want to do and what you want to pursue, and you could benefit from that or you could go a different route from others so that was a great networking opportunity to be able to split up on the last day saturday we came back for one final time to witness one of our own receive his american degree connor paycheck he graduated in 2023 and he received the honor that only half a percent of ffa members achieve it was a super great honor that we were super excited for him to receive this year um, he had to track both of his supervised agricultural experiences with heavily involved SAE records in order to be eligible for this degree. So we're excited for Connor and his receiving of that degree. So she kind of already talked about the SAE records, but the program that we use to record these records is called AET. So FFA members use AET to track our hours, our skills that were learned, paychecks, 
um, other inf FFA information in order to be eligible for state degrees and the American degree. So there's certain requirements for each degree. Um, we hold it as a chapter level, but then it gets really detrimental as a state level and even more so as a national level. So we really um, push for keeping an updated record book because that's how we become successful in those degrees. It's very parallel to profile of a graduate. So we really like to see the similarities between what we're already tracking and then what we can expand on with both and vice versa. So then going into our nationals, um, we had Carly Christensen that was able to compete there, which was extremely difficult. Um, so we start at the very bottom, so the sub-district level. So Carly represented the winner set FFA and Iowa FFA as a whole, and then employment skills LDE, and she placed fifth in the contest out of 47 competitive state representatives, and that's been the first time that we've ever placed at nationals, which is extremely hard and <laughs> crazy to think about. Um, so in order to reach nationals, Carly had to compete at the sub-districts level and then advance as a gold, then she led, she had to compete at the district level, again, advancing as a gold. And finally, she advanced to the top 12 in state and won the state convention at, at the job interview LD, also as a gold. Um, she had to complete and submit multiple times a professional resume, cover letter, job lab, job application, and job description. So from the state level to the national level, we kind of have to rework some things that we send in so they meet the requirements. Um, over there is her uh, resume and cover letter. And then this was at state convention and the national convention. And then she went through prelim the preliminary round, and that consisted of virtual interview and email correspondence. So that was the first part of that. Um, and then the face-to-face -face interview and handwritten correspondence. And then the semifinals um, round consisted of face-to-face -face interview. So for the very first part, they have the 47 states. They narrowed it down to 12. She ended up in that 12. From there, that 12, they narrowed it down to eight. From eight, they narrowed it down to, five, to four. And then she ended up in fifth. So, um, yeah. The finals consisted of the networking lunch on and the industry professionals and CEOs in the mock job interview over the time. I will say I'm super blessed to have that opportunity, but that was quite scary to sit and try to eat a meal with agcareers.com as a CEO sitting right next to me trying to ask me questions. But I'm super grateful that I had that opportunity and that was the most mock experience I could get before I would actually be in that place in life. So I was so excited to be in that contest and so excited to advance that far and, and just so grateful for that honor to represent Winterset. Networking opportunities at convention, members had a generous opportunity to network, college and career expo workshops, service project checklist, members met fellow Blue Jacket uh, wearers from all the states. I met someone from Alaska. Um, they were actually originally in Ames, so they randomly tapped me on the shoulder came up to me. Apparently they were fames, graduated, go to Alaska for cod, uh, salmon fishing. That's interesting. Um, the college expo was really interesting. I know I talked to I, I, Iowa State and SDSU about ag-based um, ag majors. The career expo was really interesting. I went to an Air Force training simulator. That was really seasicking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, workshops really interesting. I know that most of everyone on the team went to entrepreneurship, which was really cool for me because I kind of want to start my own business. That was really helpful for some ideas. Service projects, we learned a bunch of new things that we could do as a chapter for the rest of the community. And it was just a really cool experience to meet people from everywhere. It was really, really awesome. Thanks. The members were challenged to complete a checklist, and one of those things was taking a picture or having an autograph of every 50 states. So that was people were trying to, to cram on Friday, trying to find pictures of Alaska and Hawaii, and there's just so few members that it was hard. But it was so cool to meet people from other areas of our nation. Are there any questions that we can answer about the convention or anything that we partake in? Is that okay? Yeah. Uh, 
uh, Connor who got that degree, what, what, what was he, how did he get that? Like, what was the kind of, what was he doing, I guess? I'm not familiar. Yeah, so he first had to get the state degree, that just our Iowa degree. And with that, that AET that we mentioned, we have to track our skills, our hours put into our supervised agricultural experience. So for me, mine is performance horses and then my job as well. So then I believe for Connor, he showed pigs. So that was his main SAE. And then he had another one for his work. So he trapped every single skill and every single hour and every single paycheck that he put into every single one of those weeks that he spent with any of those activities. So from seventh grade all the way to senior year, he tracked paycheck show pigs was his SAE. And then with that, if you complete all that and you meet the eligibility requirements, then you can receive your state degree you want to go on, which only half a percent of FFA members do, then you can receive your American degree from those hours as well with some more stipulations. So kind of just to go on that a little bit more, just so you know, like how many hours you really have to get. It's a lot of work, like extremely yeah. difficult. I know at, um, at the state level, you have to have 2000 hours. So just think about how long you are in the barn every single day or for me, it's the barn, but for other people, it looks a little bit different, like your job. And then at the national level, that's where it gets harder because you do have to make $10,000 or you could get so many different hours, which I think it doubles. Yeah. So it just becomes a little harder and challenging because you get that as a sophomore in college. So you have to still be involved in the ag industry. So that's kind of where it gets hard. He has to still be involved with the chapter, even for those two years that he's been out of high school. So he might be totally done with Winterset High School, but unfortunately he still has to come back and assist as an alumni member with FFA as much as maybe he didn't love that. That was part of that requirement. So, yeah. How many, <clears throat> excuse me, how many students do we have uh, currently in FFA in our school district? We're still updating our roster because we still have some members playing, paying dues, but I think we're over 65 now. So over 65 with six officers. Yep. Thank you. So freshman yeah. through senior. It starts seventh grade. Oh, so yeah. you said yep. that. Yep. Yes. Okay. Seventh grade. Any questions? Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you. Congrats. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Thank you guys for coming. Yeah, thanks yeah, for being here. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, if you get hours, yeah, I was gonna say we'll plug those into eight. Break your hours. Yeah. Presentation. All right, Superintendent Gross, we'll go back for building level oh, reports. Yeah, upload a couple. I, Mr. Sussman and Mrs. Plant added some today. I think I linked those in. Um, I don't have them. Did I not? <laughs> Hope I didn't put them in the wrong month. Um, I could have done that. I did start next month's meeting. I hope I didn't put them in the wrong month. So I jumped in today and put them on there. Hope I didn't put them in the wrong month. Um, but I'll let them kind of give an overview of that and I'll try and find those too. Start with, start with elementary. Yep. All right. So under strategic priority one, um, you know, looking for real world focuses for people. And one of the things we go go for a, or an opportunity or a problem that kids can help solve. First grade, this right now decided that kids needed hats and mittens. Um, and then get hats and mittens, you have to have some money. So they have been designing and drawing posters and making posters. They've been uh, selling for about two bucks a piece uh, just to make some money to get some hats and mittens for kids that need them. So finding a real world problem and solving. Priority two, um, 21st century skills and some other cool stuff. Mrs. Sussman has come up with a second and third grade glow gallery um, in one of our rooms. She's put uh, black paper around all of it, put up art. Uh, so next Tuesday between 4.30 and 6.30, um, there will be a glow art walk uh, at the elementary. Uh, really kind of cool when to stop by. Uh, and then stay for a PTO meeting afterward. That's pretty cool. Um, Next one, uh, expand opportunity is number three uh, for developing self-worth and connection with others. We've started using Beanstack, a, a web tracking place for reading. Um, and our first goal was 50,000 minutes. When we blew past that, we're up to 150,000 minutes um, of school-wide reading right now. Probably shooting for close to 500,000 by the end of the year. So each 50,000 minutes, we do something fun. So I was in, I know the weather's getting full of popsicles this week. Bought them before, like turn frigid. Uh, we'll have those this week, kind of celebrating all the reading we're doing um, at the elementary. Uh, strategic priority number four um, PLC times we took one time last week just to go around uh, and go to other classrooms, uh, spending time in other classrooms, learning what other teachers are doing, 
uh, leaving a positive comment for, for the classroom teacher and uh, doing some learning that way. And what we're doing at the elementary. That's what you're doing. Thank you, sir. Julie. Okay, well, you got to see most of my report upstairs, so I won't go over that. That really falls in that strategic priority number one, authentic learning experiences. Those birth white whiteboards are just part of that environment. So, um, for 21st century learning skills and opportunities, um, we have all three grade levels have big projects kind of coming to a culminating end the week that we get out for Thanksgiving. So, our fourth grade, it'll be our third annual balloon parade. So the morphology parade, students are doing word studies and then they build balloons to go with their word. Um, so that is happening uh, the weeks that we get out, 20, 20th, 21st. Um, fifth grade put a new project on the docket this year where they have done a state fair event. Children have and researching and studying up states and we'll have presentations on that similar to our wax museum kind of thing but we were wanting um, some social studies geography focus on that um and then sixth grade and you've heard me talk about it i think every month because it's been going on for the last few weeks as our community recipe unit will be wrapping up that week um and that one has been really interesting because the project is embedded in their day-to-day -day lessons um, with the ratios and learning ratios and then writing blogs and doing all of the things with recipes. So you're invited to come. That will be, there'll be a project Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday uh, of that week. Really focusing in on student confidence with public speaking, teamwork, and those other essential skills that they need when it comes to profile of a graduate, which takes me into a three and four. So CKH um, has really just become part of what we do here at middle school. I think you can walk into just about any classroom and you'll see pieces of it. Um, so we will be applying for National Showcase School in January again. Mid-year survey for those who have children in this building is now open, so we're going to start sending that out to parents as well in getting staff um, doing the survey so that we can use that data to tell our story. I included in my report our implementation data for you. Um, we learned some things as we did that this time, uh, which meant we missed some of our reading, like capturing that data, and we missed our launch because I did the schedule incorrectly, so we weren't in the classrooms at those times. We know that it's happening, it just wasn't reflected. Um, and then the last one I gave you is our memorable moment survey data that really goes with the uh, strategic four with building strong relationships. We are starting to see the student responses when we ask them what has been your memorable moment in the last 30 days in school. Um, I, this time when I gave you the data it's broke down by grade level. Um, the top thing for fourth grade was science projects and our hands on learning. Um, as well in fifth grade, it also came down to band and choir experiences were li listed as their top five. Um, sixth grade, their creative projects and the creative writing and their baking recipes and math. So we're just going to end their coding if you got to see that story on Facebook as well, their technology. So we're starting to see it shift to these academic tasks are really what's creating memorable moments for kids. We're still doing the um, staff cares about, you know, we're connecting with kids because that's also reflected in the answers. But so that's exciting to see that we're shifting it a little bit earlier than we did last year. It was spring semester when we saw more classroom, when the kids were pointing to classroom activities. So um, to be starting second quarter and really having the kids talk about the learning in the classroom. And then I just gave you the dates at the end of the things that are coming up. Any questions? Any questions? Yeah. Thank you. They're linked in the right meeting yep. now. Found them. I did have them in December. So <laughs> just click on the top one in relation to the Yeah. Uh, sorry, Mr. Suspect. Sure. 
right, we'll start with strategic priority one, uh, the idea of increasing staff opportunities and integrate real world focus, um, application based learning to ensure that all students are college and career life ready. Uh, on Thursday, October 24th, we executed our career day snapshot. Um, our seventh graders got to engage with 10 different local employers. It was purely a career exploration. Um, the employers represented a, a wide variety of uh, career pathways. We had a, a thank Mr. Gross and Ms. Uh, Mrs. Alexander. They presented to our seventh graders to talk about education. Um, I think sometimes when we are talking to kids about careers, we, for some reason, we leave out education and I think we need to push our, our kids into that. Um, our eighth graders got to meet with six different local employers and their presentations were all focused on how they leverage uh, profile for graduate skills in their day-to-day -day operations. I thought that was, it was really good. Got kids um, you know, seeing the connection between the skills that we're teaching and people in the community who are using them in careers. I gotta give a shout out to uh, Mr. St. John. He came and spoke on effective communication. So that was, it was real good. Um, the next step in this journey is beginning our employer visits. So on uh, November 21st, we're going to have uh, about 200 kids get to rotate through the Madison County Hospital. Um, we know that the diverse career paths at the hospital. So it's not just doctors and nurses, but there's a lot of different people that uh, make that uh, show run. And so that's that's the goal for at the, at the junior high is to expose these kids to these uh, careers, get them thinking, plant some seeds, um, and generate some interest. So we're excited about the 21st and getting our first career uh, or employer visit uh, underway. Um, switching to strategic priority two, integrating 21st century learning skills and student opportunities. Um, we are knee deep in planning our authentic learning showcase, which will take place Tuesday, March 4th, during the night of conferences. We are still planning this. Um, myself and my building leadership team are created a basic framework structure format for the night. Um, and we are bringing that to our staff on Wednesday. And we're going to go through something called a fine tuning protocol. And it really serves two purposes. Um, one is to give staff more input um, into the design of, this, of the showcase uh, through this protocol. And that is like a structured feedback process um, where they listen to what we're presenting. They give I like statements, what they like about it. They do I wonder statements where they kind of raise concerns through some uh, questioning. Um, and then they have like they have an opportunity to give suggestions. So that's to give them input in the building of the showcase. Um, on the flip side of that, and how it ties into 21st century skills, is this is really applicable to a, a in the classroom when you're doing a PBL experience with students. One of the essential design elements is this idea of critique and revision, where kids are giving each other meaningful feedback that can be applied to improve the product. And that can be really tough to do um, as adults. Um, without personalizing it and without just going to surface level and being afraid, afraid to offend someone or getting offended by your work being challenged. So the goal is during this PD is for teachers to A, give input on our showcase, but B, have a tool they can bring back to their classroom um, that'll give kids a structured uh, approach to giving each other feedback, which is a, I think is a critical 21st century skill to be able to uh, learn from each other, give feedback, and then apply that to improve uh, what you would think is a finished product. But, could be improved through uh, peer feedback. So that's what you should probably do. Um, number three, uh, expanding self-worth uh, and connection to others. I'm gonna go back to this core goal for the year, which is to be the best junior in Iowa. Uh, we believe that we can get kids to buy into this idea, be a part of and a contributor to best junior high in Iowa. They're gonna develop connections with each other and they're gonna develop self-worth. Um, I share some data with you guys, uh, what we measure to be quote unquote, the best junior high in Iowa, is we want 90% of our students, 90% plus of our students to be present 90% or plus of days in the term, 90% plus of our students earning a C minus or above in all classes, 90% plus uh, receiving between two, zero and two behavior referrals, and then earning a collective 3,000 difference maker dollars per term. Um, we didn't quite hit it, but we did, we did pretty well. Um, high overview, um, the C minus and above in all classes is where we struggled. We had 80% of our kids get a C minus or above in all classes, which I believe that can improve. Um, our attendance was great. We had 92% of our kids present 90% um, or plus uh, of the time. And our behavior, we were right there. We had about 89 ish percent of kids running between zero to two uh, behavior referrals. So, really, it's that uh, classroom grade piece that we need to improve. 
Also going on that self worth and connections, we believe service uh, to the community is a great way for kids to develop uh, self worth, uh, giving back to others, um, and also a great way to develop connections through service. And so on the 21st um, in the morning, prior to our employer visit to the hospital, uh, we're going to take a group of our entire school out to the historical complex and we're going to do some uh, fall cleanup for them. So we're going to rake up uh, the leaves and clean up that space. Um, and I think that also exemplifies this idea of being the best junior high in Iowa. We can, the data is important that, that drives decisions and helps us figure out what, where we can improve. But it's these things like an employer visit and a community service project, which I believe uh, you're not going to get every junior high in Iowa. And that's an experience that kids can walk away from and be like, yep, that's that's something special. We're part of something different. So um, strategic priority four, building strong relationships with students, staff, and community. We had... Uh, Parent-teacher conferences last week, um, Tuesday night, uh, we shut down conferences for about half an hour, had a fall festival, uh, which is, it's purely an intentional relationship building activity where we prioritize connecting with families. Um, and so we had meat and cheese tray, we had hot chocolate, s'mores, and caramel apples. Um, we made a decent turnout, um, really just an opportunity for uh, families to be in a uh, a low stakes environment, it's very relaxed, you can connect with staff, um, and enjoy each other. So um, that was that was great to see. That's it. Any questions for Josh? Thank you, sir. All right, Cam, what do you got? Sorry. No, Sorry, was it was too. Was it? No, seventh grade. Here. Seventh grade basketball. Seventh grade girls two. basketball. Yeah. Well. Set a trap for him for game two. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> set a trap. That you're going to teach her. So, yeah, go to go two priorities here. Uh, just really quick. It's still, still working on our college career light ready stuff. Uh, we had instructional rounds October 14th. Uh, we went through collected data in our classrooms. Good experience. The feedback I got from the administrator is moving out to good practice. Um, sounds like we might do one at the middle school, possibly elementary, maybe that day uh, in December. Um, but just an opportunity for other other leaders in our district to come look in our classroom and see what it is. So we're just collecting data around tasks, what we're asking kids to do. It's not evaluative. We're not judging teachers. We're just trying to get a snapshot of what, what are our kids doing in the classroom that day? What are we asking them to do? Um, authentic learning tasks. I think the FFA chapter up there. Doing that, that, that that's the stuff that we need our kids doing and we're encouraging our kids to do is go and have those experiences because those are the authentic learning experience so sometimes we try to recreate it in the classroom and, and it's tough it, it doesn't feel real world when you do a mock interview with mr smith and pedro but uh it's a good first step but going on and doing this so right now our juniors are doing their job shadows so a lot of them are leaving going to different different um employers you want to have the day that we excuse uh, them away from school because we want them to see this before they go to college. I don't want to say waste money on a degree that they're not going to use, but right, I want them to have a pretty good idea when they go into college. So that that's a lot of our authentic learning is looking like right now. The example of that's our shed project um, that our construction class did. Uh, so this is great, like getting them to learn how to do a, a, a building permit. You can't just you can't just build stuff, right? Uh, how do I order the, the materials? We, we use 3 How do I order it? And then you have to pick it up. I mean, all these things, right? The craftsmanship, quality, how do I transport something? Do I meet with the customer? Do I actually hear the customer? You know, or do I just create, you know, one size fits all shelves and we just put them up? So those are the type of activities that we're trying to promote in the high school. Uh, the 21st century learning skills, student opportunities, again, we're, we're connecting them with colleges. We've got a college trip to Simpson tomorrow. We've got DMAC, um, criminal justice trip, December 3, uh, where kids are signing up, continuing to take these trips, get them exposure to campuses. Uh, we, are, we are tackling the 21st learning uh, in our grade level meetings. So every Wednesday, we have grade level meetings um, throughout the month. We tackle one of uh, Covey's seven habits of effective teens uh, every month, and we go through that. What does that mean for you? Um, this month, uh, it's putting first things first. So learning how to prioritize time, how do I plan, how do I organize, right? Uh, and then we take different information that's, that's essential for grade levels. So with seniors, we start talking about FAFSA. 
when you looked at the scholarship link, you walked them through them. You know how to, at least certain schools have a period where it doesn't cost you to enroll in their school. That's when you should be, in, you know, submitting your application. You start talking about juniors, about work-based learning the next year, MOC, you know, college, military, or career readiness. What does that look like for you? And how do we connect you with those opportunities? Um, freshmen, sometimes, let me be honest with you, is driving in the parking lot. How to park your vehicle between two lines, right? They don't, you know, look, look down the right, please, as you walk. Um, so everything is tailored to them. Um, uh, strategic priority three, that connection, developing self-worth. Um, you know, we did the cell phone conversation. We shared that data with Mr. Gross. Mr. Gross had that. Maybe kind of we shared it yet or not, but um, just, just getting input from students. What does this look like? What are the challenges of that? Uh, voice and choice in that process. Um, and then we've got connections to all states. So music festival, November 21 through 23. We've got three, three instrumental soloists. We've got one vocal soloist that will be performing down in Ames uh, during that weekend, which is awesome. We've got winter sports starting. I gave you guys the numbers with girls wrestling 20. We've got 20 students involved in that. I think those numbers are going to continue to go up, uh, which is an awesome thing. Our boys wrestling team, 34 right now. Girls basketball, 21. Boys basketball, 29. We've got four boys that are going to head to Indianola and participate in swimming. They're fantastic. 13 um, people are going to be wrestling cheer. 15 are going to be basketball cheer. Uh, but what I've loved that our student council has done this year is they have put what our dress days are. We put them on posters. We put them in high visibility areas, encouraging kids to dress up. Prior to this year, it was like, Snapchat, Instagram, hey, tonight's construction, right? And, and not every kid knew, not everybody was aware of this. Putting that stuff in the cafeteria, putting it in the hallway. If you want to be a part of this, be a part of this. Um, and, and that was a cool thing to see. Number four, the authentic relationships. Give you guys a heads up. We've got self-care day on Wednesday. We do two 45-minute sessions at the end of the day, teaching kids how to have a positive stress relief activity that they can do to help regulate themselves. And our goal with this is threefold. Number one, they learn how to self-regulate in a positive way. They don't turn to destructive behaviors. Number two, they might learn something new, right? Succulent painting might be an arts and crafts thing that they like. And then number three, it's a peer-to-peer -peer interaction. We put our phones down and we do something with each other. We learn how to how to talk. We learn how to one of the best ones is targeting. Like something I grew up doing, and some of our kids aren't doing it. If they would just learn how to even do it. play hearts, you can talk, you can play hearts, you can think, interact, and that doesn't involve a cell phone. It's something you can do for fun, it's something you can do lifelong. So while it takes away from school, I feel like this is something that's good for them. Uh, student Council worked with our junior high student council at Veterans Day Assembly on Friday. They did a great job, the students did a great job presenting. Um, our student council attended the leadership conference on October 28th. Am I still in your thunder? Hope I'm not. I'm on our council. You're on our council. So I did a great job. I'll let you go over that once. Um, on the back end, yeah, we just had, I know fall is a great time. It's a lot of fun. We started with these sports. We come with these sports. There's so many recognitions from athletics. I know we have a lot. The marching band had a very successful season. Our choir is doing very, very well. But um, I just gave you guys a list of all of our, our all conference uh, students. So if you guys see them in the community, congratulate them, highlight uh, our girls' state cross country team took fifth. I think they're projected to take eighth. They took fifth. They did fantastic. Uh, we had two boys that ran in that meet. They did well as well. Um, we had three academic all states so far Lucy Davis, uh, Rena Henderson, and Brent Axton. We're all academic all states. Uh, the first two in cross country, running right volleyball. Uh, I always say our first name wrong, sorry. Guinevere McCusker, uh, senior for us, qualified for the state swim meet uh, from Indianola. So she's swimming in the 200 to 400 meter, meter freestyle relay uh, with the Indianola team this weekend in Marshallton. So another thing. Uh, and then our football team, good season. We had our all district players on there, volleyball all conference as well. So. I share that with you, not, not for any other reason than you can congratulate those kids for this um, Questions for Smith for Mr. Smith. Thank you, sir. Thanks.
All right, moving on to the consent agenda. Minutes are presented from the October meeting. Anybody have any corrections, changes? I saw none. Okay. Next up, paid bills and invoices. Two invoices I did reclass into Fund 33 because they met the threshold. One is for some Iowa mechanical that's still part of that junior, junior high school with the project. Uh, the second one is electronic engineering and equipment. We upgraded the stage lighting. I know that um, Mr. Gross talked about that last time we were together. Um, other than that, I mean, I made a few notes right and left, but do you have any questions for me? You hit the two that I highlighted. Oh, there you go. Um, Heartland AA, the 3000 for supplies. Is that just that is still printing. printing? Okay. I just kind of want to keep an eye on some of those things this year. So and we're still kind of watching that. So yep. we got an update report on media and we spent about 43%. And we're going to just kind of see how that shapes out and what type of charges we do get once that allocation mm -hmm. that they were able to keep has been spent. Okay. I'll keep you posted. Perfect. On the Motorola solutions for 27. That's part of our safety grant that we got through the state. It's actually federal dollars, and those are the eight radios for the. Oh, that's one of them right there, right? Yeah. Well, it didn't pay for the ad so oh. <laughs> So, yes, it looks just like that. Yeah. If you like this one, you'll really like that one. <laughs> <laughs> paid for admin except for district office. It did. Thanks. Any other questions on paid bills and invoices? No. Personnel report is there, Justin, anything? No, just okay. some coming and going with coaches. Uh, any questions for me? Have to entertain, but that's kind of- We have some, evidently some good junior high involvement. We got lots of uh, coaches due to numbers. Yes, yep. Yeah. Yeah. And that's been the, the case kind of since I've been here. It seems like we've added a coach at junior high because the numbers kind of consistently. Uh, they did add junior high girls this year, our conference did. So that's why we have the a junior girls them. coach. Um, they will actually wrestle um, after Christmas. So junior high boys are wrestling right now. Girls are playing basketball. After Christmas, the boys will play basketball. Girls will wrestle. Okay. So, like, what kind of numbers do you see doing both? Oh uh, boy, I don't, I don't know that right or off the top of my head, Tim. How many we have junior high are going to do both? You know, uh -oh. um, I don't even exact number. Do we have several that are doing? Yeah, I'd say <clears throat> both. That's good. Yeah. I can experience both those. Yeah. Things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you know, just a caveat on that. The uh, you know, state girls wrestling is, is one of the fastest growing sports in, in not just Iowa. Uh, numbers continue to grow. State of Iowa is going to two classes at the state meet this year. There'll be a 1A and a 2A uh, to break up the big and small because of just number of programs that are being added. Nice. Yep. Any other questions on personnel? Nope. Open enrollment. Cammie's provided the worksheet there, and we are uh, going to – uh, approve two, correct, Cammie? Is that what you're you coming into the mm -hmm. district that's based on good cause? It's good. There were two out of the district, mm -hmm. but we're tabling those. They're not our resident students. They're Orient Maxburg students, but they're thinking that with the dissolution, they will become our students. And they wanted to just be preemptive. And it's like, no, we can't act on a student that's not ours yet. Okay. So we just tabled those. Okay. Financial report. I don't know what to say. <laughs> we say the same things every month. We are plugging along. If you look at the revenues and expenditures, I think it's very important for you to always compare to the prior three years average. Because as you can see, our revenues and expenses do not, they are not linear. They're just not going to move that way. So this shows you that we're right on track with the revenues and expenditures. As far as the statement of position, it's still a little early in the year to kind of see if there's anything that's, um, to keep an eye on or to dig into a little bit deeper, but um, we're plugging along. Our, our fund balance, we know, is very healthy. We do know that we will dip into it slightly this year in the general fund. Um, remember that in nutrition, we only look at the receivable, which is the negative accounts, and the deferred revenue, which are the positive accounts. We really only update the balance sheet once a year. But I am keeping an eye on those accounts, and we're still in fine condition there. We only have a handful that are over our $10 uh, for policy, and I'm working with those families. Questions for me? 
pay my miss. Uh, Tara yeah. watches ours on a daily basis. Don't worry. I pay my miss. Contracts and agreement. Oh, sorry, any other question on the financial report? Uh, contracts and agreement. School based therapist provider light gets in. As presented. Yeah, Kendra. Just another, another new one. Another therapist in town that reached yeah. out and asked if we had a need for in school um, face to face therapy, and we do. So, perfect. Yeah, she already had some clients in town, and so has seen a couple of her students in school that you know, parents could get them out during the day. Okay. Uh, TPRA number four, minimum four, Cami, is that you? Yeah, they're just taking back. They've, they've reallocated. Now that they've shut down all the apprentices, you can't put any new ones in. Now they can truly calculate how much is going to cost for you to finish. And so then they've taken any extra money and they've pulled it back. So this is just saying that we're taking some of your money away. <laughs> but we have um, we have already sent that back in. Okay. Uh, was that it for, that's it. Any other questions, concerns, discussion for consent agenda? If not, I entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Motion by Malcolm, is there a second? Second. Second by Gina. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Old business, one item. Second reading and adoption of the board policies updated based on IASB recommendation for those uh, three that were there. We discussed those last month, the use of motor vehicles, basic instruction program, and purpose of non-instructional and business services. Anybody back for a second reading. Okay. Yep. Any questions on those from last month? Mm -hmm. I would entertain a motion to approve them on second reading. Awesome. Motion by Emily, is there a second? Second. Second by Gina. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. New business. Set date and authorized publication of public hearing for fiscal year 26 calendars. Yeah, we're plugging right along. We've met twice, uh, kind of have what is a near final version of the calendar. They're getting some last minute feedback. We'll finalize next week and should have the public hearing for it at the December board meeting. Um, should be ready to go. So we need to act on that, correct? Yeah. To publish to it. that it'll be on the December meeting. Okay. Do I have a motion to set the public hearing for fiscal year 26 calendars as the December 9th, 2024 meeting? So moved. Motion by Tim. Is there a second? Second. Second by Gina. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Next up, first reading of updated board policy 605.08, artificial intelligence and the educational environment and supporting regulation. Yeah, so the first, we'll start with the 605.08. This was a place we brought last um, year. They went through and then uh, adopted after the year kind of ended and with some of the learning that Chad and the team, they want to add uh, the changes which are highlighted for you uh, when it comes to regards to data privacy security that it includes social security numbers, uh, students' use of AI. Um, again, they just this is based on their experience and how we're vetting those resources. So those are just some changes they'd like to see um, added. So the yellow is added? Yeah. Okay. And then the other was, if you remember, we talked about uh, deep fakes, AI-generated images, mm -hmm. uh, and getting something in there. Uh, so this is the policy put together. Uh, Siobhan doesn't have one. ISB currently doesn't have one on this. Um, we did send this to our attorney, uh, and this is what she kind of sent back to us with all the changes that she recommended. So this will be a regulation that supports the AA policy that you're approving uh, that allows us to, to come on, not only communicate to students about not creating them, but then what happens if they do. Um, unfortunately, some schools in Iowa already experienced this last year. So uh, trying to get this in place, um, well, not only to communicate to kids, like I said, then what we'll do if they if they do choose to generate the images and distribute them. So those are what those are. Any questions for Justin on those? Any concerns, thoughts? Uh, Chad will be here. Uh, he asked to give the board an update on AI in December, so we'll put that as part of our, uh, so he can, if you have questions about the policy then or anything, he'll be here to kind of talk about the task force as well, so. Okay, if not, I entertain a motion to approve uh, first reading of updated policy 605.08 and its supporting regulation. So moved. 
Is there a second? Second. Motion by Gina, second by Malcolm. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. Mm -hmm. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Moving right along to board member reports. What do you got for us? I mean, he already stole your thunder. We heard, but. Um, so city council is kind of entering its like second busy season behind homecoming, just with all like the winter drives and everything. So last month, 25 student council members attended the Iowa State Leadership Conference. And it, that was at Iowa State, so it's going to be But during uh, this conference, members were able to visit with other schools, like plan and see what they do for their student council. And so we kind of got new ideas from that. And then we also listened to key speakers that just talked about leadership in general and what we can do to improve in that. And then we also, last week, we took 35 student council members to volunteer at Meals from the Heartland. So it was a good little volunteer opportunity and they did that for uh, two hours. Um, but we're still planning, planning to do that again, coming, I think it's in like January. So it's probably gonna look the same, with like 30 to 40 student council members going. And then um, recently we started working on our late fall slash winter activities. And this includes like our winter warmth drive, adopt a family, veterans day assembly, which we completed last week and then decorating the nursing home, nursing home. And for the veterans day assembly, which was on Friday, we had students in charge of running that assembly, which I thought went pretty well. And then we also made them, we made the veterans, which were locals, we made them gift bags. All of the items in the gift bags were really donated from students and other members. And then for adopt a family, we've had members sign up to be assigned to one of the six kids, like to fulfill one of their wishes, I guess. And like these wishes can range from like Legos to like clothing items, like art supplies, basically just anything that they want for Christmas, I guess. And then we are also beginning to work in promote the winter warmth drive, which we will be hosting throughout November and December. And then we're just basically trying to put out flyers that say any students welcome to donate winter clothing, such as coats, gloves, or hats. That's basically it. Perfect. Thank you. Excellent. Uh, Emily. Um, thank you, Justin, for all of the cell phone data breakouts. That was very helpful. I've been perusing through those and looking at comments. I think that gives us uh, some great information to, to look at as we're moving forward with that and um, distilling that down to some usable conclusions out of each section was really, really nice. Um, part of that I want to add to is that convention at IASB next week, I think there's a cell phone topic, AI topic. We've got several of those built into the sessions as well. So it'd be nice to get some more information on that. So I'll see most of you there. I'm open. Gina? I'm good. Tim, good? good. All right, Justin, you're up. Yeah, I'll sort of be stapled backwards. I'd fall <laughs> apart tonight, apparently. Um, uh, they're going to put the copier backwards. I apologize. But ISB convention, as Jared mentioned, kind of uh, put down who we have registered in the plan. I have a suburban both days. Uh, welcome to ride with us. Uh, we'll leave from the admin building. I'll put an email out next week on departure times. I assume you're going to be staying down there, yeah. Jared. That's what I thought. So, um, and then Mackenzie on Thursday, I'll let you know. And then Corey and Kendra will plan on picking up when that's over in the room. So we'll glad you're going. Uh, cell phone discussion update, as Jared mentioned, uh, a lot of good data. It took a while to separate it out by building and, and give that to you. But um, I think it's, as Jared mentioned, a lot of good information. Just to keep you updated on the timeline, uh, we'll meet this Thursday as an admin team, kind of go through it and start, like, what do we think policies and procedures should be or could be? Take that to staff on one of those two days in November to get their feedback. Um, and then I'll provide that with you going into that uh, board meeting in, November, in December. And we can have a conversation about what we think the policies and procedures should be at that time. Any changes will be made then. Again, two readings. So we'd have a reading then and then in January uh, is kind of the timeline. So right on track with where we need to be with that information. Uh, flight school, uh, I've kept you in the loop on what we're trying to do here. Um, uh, update as of now, when DMEC backed out, we could run it through Indian Hills. Um, it'll qualify for current enrollment, but most of those classes would be online. And then our kids would need to go down there at least probably once a term to do the hands-on competencies. Uh, if we worked with the flight school out at the airport, uh, they'd be right here. Um, that's going to have to look a little different based on our conversation with the DE. It'd be like work-based learning credit. Um, 
Right now, they're not recognized as an industry credential that's supported by the state. There is an avenue to do that. Um, and then you can use grant dollars. So concurrent enrollment, we get money back for. We wouldn't for that. And we'd have to, to pay for that training. So we're having a meeting with Sarah Overton set up on Thursday to better understand that. And then we'll contact the DE and try to figure out how we can get this approved and maybe qualify for some grant. Makes no sense to me why we can't use somebody right here to provide that opportunity. So we're working on that. Hopefully we'll get that uh, in place before uh, course guides come to you in January already. Yeah. Crazy. Uh, screen Sandy night. Uh, we're again planning that next Wednesday, the 20th, um, 68, 68 there. I can't run the flyer. Um, but basically it's a night for uh, parents to kind of engage in discussion around uh, uh, online screen time, social media, a uh, chance to talk with other parents around you know, what would be some, maybe some guidelines that would put in place at home when it comes to screen time, share some of the the data that you've seen that was shared um, around the impact of screen time. So hopefully we have a good turnout. Uh, over half of the people who filled up the survey said they would be interested. I don't know if that'll work in their schedule if they show up, but we'll we'll plan accordingly. Uh, Is that at the high school? Yes. Yep. Um, we had interest in asking Representative Sorensen, Sorensen and Senator Sinclair to the December board meeting. Is there any interest in that? We did it before. I say always. Sorensen showed up. Uh, Sinclair wasn't able to make it. I'll reach out. Um, that will be a little, probably longer meeting. It's our annual board meeting where we do resident, all that fun stuff, uh, close out the audit. But I will reach out and see if they can make it, um, and we'll put them towards the front. Um, Hopefully, better understand what they're thinking going into the session. So I'm getting head nods. So I'll yes, I'll reach yeah, out and see yeah. if I can get them here. Um, I had a question about whole grade sharing in Iowa. What is it actually? Um, never being a district that's actually done that, I had to go back and look. But I gave you a flow chart that I think kind of lays it out. It's a very unique flow chart. chart. <laughs> that one, yeah. I'll walk through the different sharing opportunities, and then if you go on the right, you know that the whole I'll grade sharing. The whole box. <laughs> yeah. It, it wouldn't print on right? I just get it smaller for one sheet as on the DE's website, but kind of walks through what happens in whole grade sharing. Um, I've had some of our uh, parents whose students open enroll who live there asking questions. Apparently there's a vote uh, or a joint meeting on Wednesday between OM and uh, Nottoway Valley around this topic. So it kind of lays out what whole grade sharing is. Um, question that I've been have gotten is, does this allow them uh, to um, then consolidate. I think it does. By missing the timeline for dissolution and having to go one more year, they actually could pivot um, and, and look at consolidation versus um, dissolution. So uh, just prior to that to you, there was a question. I do apologize about the size, but I had to shrink it to get on one page. So. <laughs> um, and then staffing plans. Start to work on staffing plans for you uh, and pulling that together. The goal is to get that to you in December. Again, as Campy has mentioned, we're in, in pretty good uh, financial shape. Um, but as people leave with our decreasing enrollment, it's just we have to look at every position. Does it make sense to to make some changes and hire those back? So I'll try and walk through that for you. And then one thing I, I failed to uh, add on there, but I think you're aware is the architect visits around the strategic uh, master plan. We have one more this week. They need to turn everything in by the end of November. And then Chad's looking for a date to try and have an interview of them in December. Um, we could have up to two board members if you wanted to sit on that interview committee uh, to, to select uh, who you'd want to go with or to at least interview them. Um, let me know if you're interested. We'll try and include those on dates, but you could have two sit on the actual interview before it came to the board. Um, okay. My thought right now would be Ray and myself, potentially two board members, Nick and or Cam because some of it looks like it's going to happen at the high school. So that's kind of where that's at. Um, I'll let you know when we get a date set um, and we'll plan accordingly. So that's all I've got. Questions for me? No, sir. Any questions? No. All right. Before we go into closed session, just a reminder, the next board meeting uh, with a lot to do is December 9th, and it'll be back out at the admin yep, office. That's right. Okay. Yep. Thanks for coming out here. Hopefully it was yeah. worth it. Thank the Berkeley yeah. whiteboards. Um, yeah, you'll see that's it, across the district. And I think it's, uh, I like the approach. I like the discussion kids are having. And so thanks for coming out and checking it out. Before we go into closed session, can we take a three minute break? Perfect. Yeah.